Hello, welcome to my talk, AI for Art and Design. I'm Margaret. I am a machine learning engineer and researcher. Currently, I work on research to showcase how AI can be used to create designs. I'm a machine learning GDE. I contribute to TensorFlow, write tutorials and blog posts, and speak at conferences. I'm a community leader. I'm the lead organizer of GDG Seattle and another community called Seattle Data Analytics and Machine Learning. So today, we're going to be discussing some basics of AI versus machine learning versus deep learning and computer vision tasks. Then I will spend most of the time talking about using generative models to create art and design and share with you some tools and resources. We hear these words a lot, AI, machine learning, deep learning, and the computer vision. So what's the difference? AI is the broad discipline that aims to create intelligent machines, and machine learning is one way to achieve that intelligence. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which has become quite popular in recent years. We can use deep learning, machine learning, or non-machine learning algorithms to solve problems such as computer vision or natural language processing. Computer vision is one way to interpret images with computers. So here's an overview of computer vision tasks. Uh, first, we're going to talk about image classification. And this is where we classify an image belongs to a particular class. For example, all of these icons belong to a class called home. And we can also classify these images with multi-labels or multiple classes. For example, this particular icon um, can be tagged as home and house. We can also extract latent features of images and as a result, perform visual search and image clustering. We can identify not only the object, but also the location of each object in the image. For example, locate the UI elements. Instead of classifying the overall image and then locate the objects, we can also classify whether each pixel of the image belongs to a certain class, and this is called image segmentation. And we classify whether each pixel of the image belongs to a certain class. And finally, the generative models, which can be used to generate new images uh, doing style transfer, and we will be talking about this a lot later on. Now, I'd like to give go into examples of using generative models to create art and design. In 2015, we had Deep Dream. Deep Dream was an experiment that visualizes the patterns learned by a neural network, similar to when a child watches clouds and tries to interpret random shapes. Deep Dream overinterprets and enhances the patterns it sees in an image. So with Deep Dream, it was really the first time we used neural network to create some um, artistic art representation. In 2015, we were able to perform image style transfer by using convolutional neural network feature extraction and apply the style of a style image and to a content image. And then we come up with a image, new, produce a new image. I have included a link here to a blog post called Neural Style Transfer 50 Shades of Meow. I have seen a lot of style transfer examples before, and uh, this particular example seems to be um, my favorite. It's really beautiful style transfer. In 2014, Ian Goodfellow created Generative Adversarial Networks. And since then, there are all kinds of variation of GANs. GANs are fun, but difficult to train. I, I have included these variation of GANs here for you to read the papers. 
So generative adversarial models have at least two network models which compete against each other like a chess game. It's a zero-sum game. Deep convolutional GANs, short for DC GAN, was one of the earliest type of GANs. The network uses random noise as the input, then it has a generator that generates images, and the discriminator critiques the generated images made by the generator, and as a result teaches the generator how to become better at creating these fake images. So we have random noises input, and then the output are actually the images. In 2016, Pix to Pix was introduced, and it was able to convert black and white images to color images, um, sketches to high-res photos, day to night, etc. With Pix to Pix, when you do training, you must have paired images, which may not be readily available. However, in case of UI design assets, you may be able to easily find pairs because a designer will typically create, say, an icon contour or layout before they style it. I have included also a link here to the TensorFlow tutorial. And in 2017 came PsychoGAM, which is very similar to pix to pix The nice thing about PsychoGAM is that you no longer need to have paired training images. So the look at the PsychoGAN can um, convert between horses and zebras, winter and summer, and then a, a picture, a regular photo converted to Monet or Van Gogh uh, painting. I have also included a link to a TensorFlow tutorial for you to explore later. In 2018, Google researchers experimented with BigGAN, which is a large-scale GAN that generates high-fidelity class conditional image. I have included a link to the paper and several BigGAN variation models on TensorFlow Hub, where you will also find the Colabs notebooks that you can play with. One of the main challenges with GANs is that you don't have a whole lot of control over the images that you're generating. With conditional GAN that I mentioned earlier, that you can condition based on a particular class or perhaps a text or image. But with StyleGAN, uh, in 2018, NVIDIA Research created StyleGAN that allows more fine control of image. For example, you can create faces, um, based on particular pose, face shape, age, gender, hair color, etc, etc. There are many other variations of GANs. In 2019, NVIDIA Research created a tool that it turns rough doodle into photorealistic masterpiece with GOGAN. Here's another demo by NVIDIA Research. Image in painting lets you edit images with a smart retouching brush. And that can replace any portion of the image seamlessly. You can use the brush to define the area that you want to be cropped off. And then the deep learning model is able to reconstruct the missing pixels. And then you can see the final picture that doesn't have other people and objects. I talked about image to image translation. Now I want to talk about image to text. So uh, neural network models can also use to describe what is in the image. And in reverse, we can generate an image based on a sentence. So in 2014, um, Microsoft provided this Coco um, image data set as well as come up with the automatic image generation based on image. For example, you see an image here and uh, it, it can, here's an image and then the network is able to interpret that image and say, okay, that's a group of people shopping at an outdoor market. There are many vegetables at the fruit stand. 
And then in 2017, uh, Microsoft researchers built a bot that draws what you can tell it to. For example, you can say, this bird is red with white and has a very short beak. And then an image gets created based on your, your um, text description. In 2019, Facebook AI came up with Fashion++ Plus Plus that is capable of recommending fashion changes. Notice that the previous examples I gave, whether it's image to image translation or uh, text to image, were basically just generating images. Fashion++ Plus Plus take it one step further. Not only is generating images, fashion, but also it has some sort of sense of whether the uh, the changes in the image is factionable or not. Uh, in 2018, Microsoft AI Lab created Sketch the Code. It, this is a web-based solution that uses AI to transform a handwritten user interface design from a picture to a HTML uh, markup code, which produces high-resolution um, design, and it's called a sketch to code. Now, let's take a look at a few um, of resources and tools and also the data sets. To train machine learning models, you will need data. And I have included some data for art as well as UI and UX design. So um, first, start is the Art Institute of Chicago. It gives 5,000 high-res images, and then there are a ton of art data on Kaggle. For example, Best Artworks of All Times has paintings from 50 most influential artists. And you can also find drawings, paintings, sculptures, and engravings, art images. You can find Overwatch hero pictures. You can find Chinese fine art, uh, there's also Museum of Modern Art Collection. Uh, in terms of UI and UX design, data sets are a bit more limited. I found this Rico mobile app data sets. Basically, it has UI layouts as well as segmentation for, uh, to help with mobile um, application UI design. And then there are two data sets. One is the common mobile web app uh, icons, uh, as well as Icon50. Icons50 has 10,000 icons with 50 categories. And uh, oh, by the way, the common mobile and web app icons has over 100 um, categories of icons. It's a lar much larger data set than Icons50. When we talk about using AI for art and uh, um, generation, we first project come to my mind is Project Magenta. This is a project, open source research project by Google that uses machine learning to make music and art. You can find various project demos and code on this website. I have included the link to both the website and their GitHub page with ton of samples. Runway ML is a community platform for um, creators of all kinds to use machine learning tools in intuitive ways without any coding experience. So if you are an art, you are an artist without much coding experience, I highly recommend Runway ML. You can see here's a list of projects created with Runway ML. And uh, to the right, here's an example, of one of the projects that got created on the platform. Artist Send Machine Learning Intelligence is a program that Google created to bring artists and engineers together to realize projects using machine intelligence. I have included a link here for you to read about all their projects. I have talked about these tools and resources and data set, etc. Uh, one of the important things is also design principles. So Microsoft AI 
uh, has these design principles to address the emerging needs for guidance on creating ethical AI products at Microsoft. And it consolidates research and insights about AI from across the company that you can use when creating new AI experiences. And it has a uh, focus on these three sections, principles, uh, emerging patterns, and products. Google also has an excellent guidebook called the People Plus AI Guidebook. It provides excellent guidance on how to design human-centered AI products. I had the honor of reviewing the handbook before it was launched last year, and it will help you, for example, user needs plus defining success, data collection and evaluation, mental models, explainability and trust, feedback and control, and uh, you can also use it to guide you how to gracefully handle your errors and failures when designing AI products. I want to wrap up my talk uh, also with this website called AI and the Future of UX Design. There are a lot of articles talking about what is the future and you know, how does AI impact us, right? So the key takeaway from my talk today AI for art and design. Well, AI will assist humans. They're not going to just, they're smart, but they're not going to just take away our jobs and designers' jobs. Um, and uh, non engineers will have access to the AI tools. You know, artists and de designers will have access to these, these tools, which will help them um, create, better create their art and design, give them inspiration. And everyone, if you're an engineer without much art or design background, you can design, um, you can do UX design, you can create beautiful art and music. So thank you for listening to my talk. Please keep in touch. Follow me on Twitter, Medium, and GitHub to learn more about AI for art and design with computer vision, deep learning, and TensorFlow. Ah uh -huh.